This is a multi-species sward, it's DLF six species herbal lay that we sowed back in May, the end of May this year. Uh, we're down in Cardle in County Kerry with Michael and Bernie O'Sullivan. Um, as you can see, and by the by the geography, it's probably a challenging enough condition, challenging enough conditions for some of the species that'll be in this mixture. And um, be a very high rainfall area. This farm could come very wet. We had a good year this year um, in terms of low rainfall over the summer. They had perfect grazing conditions, really, whereas other parts of the country were in drought. But uh, in a normal a normal year, this farm would be pretty wet for most of the year. Uh, so we'll see how the, the likes of the chicory and the plantain get on here. But. As I said, this was sown this year. It looks really well. It, it does look really well in its first year. And um, we've got everything is here. All the plantain, all the chicory, all the clovers are here. Um, we'll see how it goes next year. See what survives and how long it survives for. Um, but we'll keep an eye on it. And there'll be definitely updates to come uh, over the next couple of years from this field. Anyway, uh, I have a plate meter in my hand that I was measuring grass plots with over the ditch. And I suppose we often get the question about how do you how do you measure or how do you know when your multi-species sward is ready to go? Uh, I would say this is ready to go just by looking at it. It's probably about halfway up up my boot at this stage. And um, there's a nice I, I, what I say to farmers, and it's not really it's not very scientific, but you, you'll just know. I suppose this is probably about three weeks after after its last grazing. It usually comes in about your three-week rotation and um, during the the height of the summer. So that's that's a good way to know as well. Um, you'll see in this ward as well, it's all covered in, we can't see any bare ground. It's, there's a nice stand of, of, of forage here now at the minute. Um, it's probably as tall as a, as a grass cover. Um, we're looking at about, four, if we're talking about grass, it's, it probably looks like about 1400 kilos here. If we were to use the plate meter, we'd probably overestimate. This crop isn't as dense as a grass crop, so if we leave the plate meter down, we're going to have a lot more. The plate meter will tell us there's a lot more here than there actually is. Uh, it's a really low dry matter crop, so it's not, it's not exactly comparable to, to when we do our grass measurement. Um, but again, it's a learning curve for Michael and for the other partner farmers that we have. Um, and, and a lot of farmers around the country, we're kind of all, we're all uh, figuring our way through this, the management side of things together. And it seems to have worked really good, really well this year so far, especially with the drought. We're hearing reports of double the growth rates um, with the multi-species swords sown. Uh, compared to grass swords, especially in July and August, and I suppose that's one of the main reasons that we sow these things is, is if you're in a drought-prone area, this will give you forage and give you good quality forage uh, throughout the summer when grass might let you down a little bit. So it's all about getting that balance. We need our grass for certain times of the year to do certain jobs, but we also need our multi-species um, on the other side of that to pick up when the grass is, is, isn't doing its best, you know. Yeah, Michael and Bernie are obviously, they're, they're dairy farmers, they're in derogation like most dairy farmers, they're using a lot of nitrogen and it was obviously top of their agenda this year was to see how they could reduce nitrogen. And um, We incorporated clover, you'll see it in some other videos, we oversold some white clover and other paddocks, but uh, we wanted to try this for, the, for the, the weather conditions, but also to see how it would help. Michael and Bernie's system here. So, got your standard three, with ten, three bags of 10, 10, 20 at sowing, but it hasn't got any nitrogen since, and it was sown the end of uh, May. It's now the middle of September, and I'd say he's got five. This could be the fifth grazing after a late May sowing. He'll, he'll, he'll definitely get five grazings out of this in its first year. Might get six again. We'll see how the weather goes in the, in the back end this year. Um, and then, of course, next year, early on in the year, it'll get some slurry, um, and I would say that would be all that it'll need. Um, sometimes some farmers are sometimes depending on your demand in the spring you might put a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer on it but I would say to suck it and see it probably won't need it probably won't need much nitrogen fertilizer other than your slurry um, in the first round next year there's a huge demand for information it's all it's all that um, uh, farmers talk to me about is this stuff and, and white clover so if you want more information there's a massive demand if you want more information we have a handy little agronomy guide on our website that you can download or you can call myself or any of the lads on the team for for more information you can also follow the dlf multi-species discussion group on facebook for more information